start, I, I, don't, I don't even want to call this a series, but I'm, this is going to be a series of messages looking at something very important in our Christian life. Um, the title of this message is called The Better Thing. Uh, the Better Thing. We're going to, I want to ask a question. How many of you feel busy? All the time. All the time. I, you know, it's funny. You can ask people, hey, how you doing? And I never heard somebody say they wasn't busy. Everybody says, I'm just, oh, I'm just, I'm just busy. Just, just busy. And, and, and usually the other side of that is I'm tired. I, I'm t- How you feeling? I'm tired. Why? Because I'm busy. <laughs> it, it's, they're usually related and they're usually linked. And so, New Christian, I, I, if you were in Bible study this week, then you, we've already looked at this text. But after Bible study, I was, I, I, the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to come and preach this message. Um, it's in, it can be found in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Starting with verse 38. Um, Before we go to our text, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you just have your way. Lord, we have ears to hear what you have to say to us, Lord. So we ask that you just make it plain. Shine light in areas of our lives where we need to change. Where we need to give it over to you. And Lord, we will be obedient to what the Spirit has to say. Now, Lord, we pray that you just speak through your word. Hide me behind the cross. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be holy and acceptable unto you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, starting with verse 38. And it reads, And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. And he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Let me paint the picture before we get into the rest of the text. Uh, Jesus and his disciples have been traveling. They're they're starting to make their uh, journey to Jerusalem. And on their way to Jerusalem, they stop off in this town called Bethany. And because it was during Passover, usually there was a lot of people passing through. And, and in that culture, it was very common that, that Jewish people would open up their homes to allow people who were traveling to come and stay. And so Jesus goes to this lady's name, to, this, to a village. The village is actually is called Bethany. Bethany is right outside Jerusalem. And, and, and he f- comes across a lady named Martha, and she opens her home to him. Uh, and, and, and in that day, because I, there was no TV, there was no uh, radio, there was no um, sources of entertainment, what would happen is if a rabbi would come to your house, Sister Geraldine, you would ask that rabbi to teach. And, or or they, that rabbi was invited, and they would, they would sit down and they would teach. And people would come, and they would just come over. And there would be all these people over the house. And there would be people sitting down. There would be people even standing up outside if it was a popular rabbi. And these rabbis would travel from town to town. And it's no different because they, they view Jesus as a rabbi. Jesus comes to Bethany. He has a crowd of people. The disciples are with him. And he comes to Martha's house. And, and everybody is in the house. And they all are there. And look what it says in verse 39. And she, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell tell her to help me. How many of y'all been like that during Thanksgiving and Christmas? You're the only one in the kitchen working. And everybody else sitting down watching a football game, and you be like, wait a minute, why am I the only one in the kitchen working? Or I'm the only one pre- preparing. And, and we, can, we, can, we can sympathize and empathize with Martha. We know the feeling of being the only one to be working. And, and, and the way the question is asked, we talked about this on Wednesday, it was a rhetorical question. The expectation of Martha was that the, the answer to her question was yes. 
Yes, she should. Yes, Mary should be in there helping you. Yes, Mary should be up doing the things she needs to be doing to help you. But look at Jesus' answer. Verse 41 says, Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Look, look, new creation, we, we, are, we are in an epidemic. It, there's a, there's a, a, the psychologists use this term called hurry sickness. It, it, it's, it, was, it was coined by a cardiologist. He, he started to notice that, that people were always in a hurry always working, always doing all these things, and that it was affecting their heart, and it was affecting their heart condition. And, and they, they, term, they, they, they coined this term hurry sickness. Uh, hurry sickness is this idea that we have this pressing need to make the most of every moment. We, we, we have to, a constant sense of urgency. Everything is urgent. We got to get this done. We got to get this done. We got to get this done. Before I go to bed, I got to get all this stuff taken care of. And it's, it leads to health issues. Let me, let me share some of the symptoms, if y'all don't mind. Uh, 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 some of the symptoms, irritability. Uh, you, you just, the littlest things irritate you. Now, the common things, but, but it, it, it just, it makes you upset. It, it irritates you. It gets you upset. It sets you off. Just normal things that, 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 that the, 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 the plate wasn't put away and just go off. Uh, uh, or, or somebody that put something away, it, it just, just goes off. It, it's irritability, but not only irritable, your restlessness. Can't, can't, you just can't get a good night's sleep. Or even if you say, you know what, I'm going to take, I'm going to spend some time to rest. You can't stop thinking about everything else that you got going on. It, it, you can't relax. You just, you, 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 your mind is all, oh, I'm sitting here, but man, I really need to get this stuff done. I got all this stuff to take care of. And, 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 and that's, that's a symptom. Workaholism. You, you, you're addicted to nonstop activity. If you're not moving, if you're not working, something, you feel like something is wrong. You, you feel like something is, is not right. I've got to be doing something. Or, or you have out of order priorities. Uh, um, we're, we're reactive. Instead of doing what we need to do, we just react to whatever comes up. And we just take it on and, and then try to get it done. But maybe it's not that. Um, maybe it's a lack of care for your body. Your health is deteriorating. And you can feel it. You, 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 you constantly feel fatigued and tired. You, you just, you don't feel the same. You wake up and you just ache. And it, it, all these things that's happening, it, you, just, you just don't feel good. And you, and you can't trace it to any sickness. You just, you just your body just not, your body's telling you something. You, we're just not paying attention to it. But, and the last one is escapist behavior. What does that mean? It means that when we try to get away from something, we go to something else. And when we try to get away from the work, we start to escape and get distracted by binge watching a season of whatever Netflix or whatever TV show you want to watch. Uh, or, or maybe it's not that. Maybe, maybe you, 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 you go and you, you pop a bottle and, and start to sip a little alcohol to, to get away from the, 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 the world that you're li living in. And, and, and it's, it's an escapist behavior. And all of these symptoms are because we're, we're always feeling the need to work, to be busy. And we don't know how to relax. And, 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 and that's, that's Martha. Martha, now, before we start to throw stones at Martha, one, there's a lot of us like this. There's a lot of us like Martha. Uh, uh, w Martha, there was nothing wrong with what Martha wanted to do. 
making preparations to host people. There's nothing wrong with that because she had people in her home. There was nothing wrong with that. In that culture, that was standard. That was what the people did when they, they were, they, they put hosting and hospitality on a high level. Today, we, we be like, don't you come over to my house without calling before, first. Don't you just stop by. But, 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 but these people were, they open, it, was, it was expected that their door would be open. And they would give you not just what they had left over. They would cook you a meal. They would prepare stuff. They would give you the best that they had. So Martha's desire isn't wrong. But Martha what does scripture say? Verse 30, verse 40 says, but Martha was distracted by all the preparation. This word distracted means to be pulled away. She, she was being pulled away. And see, that's the thing, new creation. See, there's, the, the reason why distraction is bad in this case is because who's in the house? It, 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 it would be a different story if it was somebody else. But because Jesus was in the house, she was being distracted by all the other stuff and missed the idea that she's in the presence of Jesus. See, now we can look back and say, Martha, what are you doing? Why are you missing the presence of Jesus? But how many of us would have been the same way? We would have been so busy trying to make sure everything's right, everything is going on for the person that's there, we would have missed the presence of Jesus. See, that's the problem with our lifestyles and in the way our culture is set up. Our culture is set up to keep us distracted. Our culture is set up to keep you working 60, 70 hours a week. Our culture is set up that you've got to do all this stuff so you can have a good life and you can make a lot of money. And so you got to put in all this work to be able to benefit from it. And our culture is set up that you work every day of the week if you can, and, and then you take off when you need to take off. But, but, but our culture wants to keep us distracted. But not only that, not only that, technology wants to keep us distracted. Everybody in this, everybody in this, in this building has a cell phone. And, and, and on that cell phone are apps that, that you frequent probably more so than you should, and, 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 and it's designed. The algorithms, y'all have heard about the algorithms, right? They, they design the algorithms to keep you engaged and distracted. We don't even know we've fallen into it when we get this, when we see that article about something that somebody we don't like did, uh, maybe a former president, and we get, we get, sucked in and we click on the article and we start to read it or we, we, we go to the video or we start to watch TikTok and, and we get down this rabbit hole of, of videos and, and, and you look up and it's an hour and a half later. I'm not talking from experience. I, I, I don't know where I got these examples from. Uh, 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 but but we, 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 we know distraction, but we don't see the distraction. We know what it is to get pulled away, but we're not seeing it. And Martha didn't see it. Martha got sucked into the preparation. She missed the presence. She got sucked into all of the things she needed to do that she missed Jesus. And even in her question, she went to Jesus thinking Jesus was going to be her ally, thinking Jesus was going to be her echo chamber, thinking Jesus was going to agree with her and make Mary start working. And Jesus simply told her and said, Mary, Martha, Martha. That, that, that double Martha, it's, 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 it's indic indicative of, of, of a loving response. He didn't say, you don't know, you, girl, you know who I am? You need to stop doing what you're doing and come sit at my feet and listen to what I got to say. No, he was, it was a loving response. He says, Martha, Martha, you, you, you are, you are upset, worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed. See, Martha was so worried about Mary, she was missing Jesus. She was so worried about Mary and what Mary wasn't doing that she missed probably anything and everything Jesus was talking about. 
And, and you know how that is. We, we get upset and distracted and, and mad at people at church or people at work and that we can't even think straight. We, we get so tunnel vision into that person that we miss Jesus in those situations. And, and, and Martha, he's saying, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only few things are needed. There's different interpretations of this, uh, but it says, but indeed, only one. Only one thing is needed. Now, now Luke doesn't tell us what that one thing is, but, but I think we can assume or we can, we can draw from the text how, what that one thing is. And it's the better thing. It, it, look, look, look what Jesus says. Few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. What's better? This is, this, is, this is the part of the message where, where I, I seek to admonish all of us. Because we've been so distracted by everything in life. We've been distracted by work, jobs, by children, by activities, sporting events. By, by pressures we put on ourselves. Who said your house has to be spick and span and spotless every day? Who, who, who said that, that you have to do life this way? And, 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 and we look at these things and it's all a distraction. And, and, and the devil can't take our salvation, but he can keep us distracted. And everything about American society is set up to keep us distracted. When you watch the news, what is the news? The news feeds you fear and, and makes you upset. And all, You never hear about good news. You only hear about bad things, distractions. Everything in this society is distracting us from the presence of Jesus. And Mary was sitting at his feet. Let me give you the, the reason why that's what, the, the image here. The rabbis, when they would come into a home, they would sit to teach. And they, they would sit. And in that culture, you mostly sat on the floor. We were talking about this in Bible study. The, you know the picture of the, the, um, oh, the Lord's Supper where it shows people sitting at a table in chairs? That is not even close to what that culture and what that picture should look like. Those people sat, they, they would have been sitting on floor pillows, if, if anything, and they would be sitting on the ground. And they would have, the table would be very low to the ground. And, and that's, why, that's why it was important when Jesus washed their feet. Because the feet would be really close to the table and to them. And so you, you can't eat when you got dirty feet right there between you and your food. And so he would, that, that they would wash the feet because they were so low to the ground. And so when it said Mary is sitting at his feet, not a literal sitting at his feet, it's just she's sitting down underneath at the, on the floor closer. And she could have literally been right next to his feet, but the image is that she's, she's down with everybody else sitting at his feet. It's this idea that you're sitting at the master's feet because you're learning from them. It's, it's, it's used often in the Bible. Paul talked about how he was raised at the feet of Gamaliel it, 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 because he was taught by his, that was his rabbi that was taught him. And so we, this idea of being at the feet is this idea of, of being taught by the rabbi. And in this case, it's not just any rabbi. It's the master. It's the, it's the master teacher. It's the son of God. It's the savior of this world who is on his way to the cross. And he, Jesus tells Martha, she, Mary, has desired something that's better. She wants Jesus. And, and that's what's better. It's, it's, it's not anything else but Jesus. It, it's, it's Jesus. Uh, the answer to every question is Jesus. That, that 
that's the person that we look to. That's the one that can teach us. That's the one that can prepare for us and give us what we need. And she has desired what is better. So what about our desires? Have we been so distracted that we miss Jesus? Listen, Jesus is always working. He's always at work. It, there's, there's things going on in your life. He's at work here. You don't even, we, we don't see it yet. But he's always at work. And we get so distracted by everything else. Even at this church, we can get distracted by the people that aren't here. The people that never came back from the pandemic. The low turnout. We can get distracted by all this other stuff. And, 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 and we can miss where Jesus is working. Because he's working in this church. We can get distracted in our lives with all of the activities and everything that's going on. And we miss the opportunities to share Christ with somebody. We've been talking about this for a long time, about discipleship and disciple making. And the first thing we say is, God has placed people around you that are in your path that he wants you to be a ministry and a blessing to. We just got to see them. How many of them missed us because we what? We're busy. We got all this stuff going on. We get distracted by everything that's going on in our lives, and we miss the opportunities to share Christ. Or we miss the opportunities to bless somebody. We miss the opportunities to share a, good, a nice word with somebody. I love Sister Geraldine's stories. When she, said, she tells the stories about when she goes to the store, and she says she's just standing in line, and, talk, and she starts talking to the person right behind her. And she starts to share uh, uh, with them a, a kind word, or, or she just listens to them. And, and she always tells us these stories, and, and she says, can I, sometimes she just gives them a hug. She, thank you, Sister Geraldine, for allowing God to use you. Because that's what it is. That's, that's not missing Jesus. That's, that's understanding and being in the presence of Jesus. See, New creation, we've got we've to change our mindset. We're not saved from the world. We're saved for the world. God wants to impact this world through each and every one of us. He saved us so that he can send us back into the world to impact those people that come across our path. And he's saying, I don't, you don't even have to find them. I'm going to bring them to you. All I want you to do is share how good I've been to you. All I want you to do is teach them, encourage them, love them like I love you. But we get distracted. And, 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 and me and Pastor Miles were talking about this. There's no perfect pastor. We're imperfect people, but we preach a perfect gospel. And, and, and what I'm sharing with you, don't think that I've learned this lesson. That's the part about Christianity. That's the part about being a pastor. See, I, I have the responsibility to teach you this, but I got to take my own medicine sometimes because I get distracted just like you do. I get, I get so tunnel vision on things I got to get done and, and working every day, taking care of the kids, going to their games, that I miss sometimes the things that God has placed right in front of me. And, and, and the other thing that I miss, and see, this is the other thing. When we sit at Jesus' feet, how many of us are making time to sit at his feet? This is the admonishment part. How, how often are we reading our Bibles, praying, having what we call quiet? You remember, y'all used to remember quiet time? Where, where, where people would ask, you, did you have your quiet time? Where, where, you, where you would read your Bible, you would pray. And then you, you, would, you would just meditate. And, 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 and see, one of the things we're going to look at next week is that these, these are called spiritual disciplines. And, and we don't have to look far to see somebody who lived it out for us because Jesus did this very thing. Jesus would, would make time every day 
to steal away, to go up, be alone away from all the disciples, and he would go pray to his father. Now, if Jesus could do this, and Jesus thought it was important enough to do it, what, what, what's our excuse? We're busy, huh? We're distracted, right? Oh, I, I, know, what, I know what the answer is. I know what the answer is for my life, but I can't answer for you. But, but I, I got a sneaky suspicion that we're distracted and we're busy. But let me tell you this. There is nothing more important in your life, in your Christian life, than this concept of, of, of sitting at Jesus' feet. Mary, what Mary desired was better because it, it was her spending time learning from the master. And for us, it's the same thing. We have to. We, it is critical. It is, it is, it, there's nothing more important. I, you can come to church every Sunday. And, and, and there still will be nothing more important than you reading the Bible for yourself in any time you can get a chance to. I don't know if it's in the morning or if it's in the afternoon. We'll talk about some of those things next Sunday. We'll talk about some of the ways you can have quiet time next Sunday. And we're going to look at Jesus' life and see how he did it. But the, 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 the thing I'm trying to get us to understand today is that you got to do it. There is nothing, nothing more important. So whatever it is, however you do it, you might be like me, and you might need to get a device. I, I, I'm always on my phone, so why not just use it to be reading scripture? How you do it isn't as important as us doing it. Let's not be like Martha, who got distracted, who got pulled away because of all the other things she was worried about. You see what it said in verse 41. It said, you are worried and upset about many things. Martha got upset and worried about all this stuff, and Jesus said, only one thing matters. Not to say that we don't do those things, right? We keep them in perspective. We keep them in line. We keep them where they need to be as non-important things. Because honestly, how, how important, I mean, I know it feels good when you have a clean house, but how important is your clean house? It's your house. It's, it's yours. You, you, or, or, you don't have to, who are you trying to impress? It's your house. I know I'm not going to get no amens today. I, I, I know, because, because it's, it's, it's contrary to everything that we've been taught and conditioned to understand and know. Because if you, if you don't have a clean house, then you're a sloppy person or you're lazy or all this stuff. And some of us are killing ourselves. All right, we, we, are, we, are, we are wearing ourselves out to live to, up to the standard that we set for ourselves because of how we've been conditioned growing up and how we've been conditioned all these things. I'm not saying don't clean up. I get on my kids all the time about not cleaning up. I'm saying keep, keep that in perspective. Keep our job in perspective. Your job, if you're working 70, 80 hours a week, if you're doing all this stuff and you're never at home with your family with, to enjoy the money that you're making, then what's the point? Keep it in perspective. Because God has set up... God has shown us from creation how he rested on the seventh day. If nobody, the person that doesn't need the rest at all is, is God. God doesn't need it, but he set that standard up, a Sabbath day rest. And some of us go seven days a week, 24-7. You up, you working, you doing, you going, you going, you going, and we never set up a time to rest. And even when we rest, what happens? We're still thinking about all the things we got to do and all the things we got to go. Even on vacation, we worried about what's going on at home. 
we worried about all these other stuff that's happening, there, and we don't even get to enjoy our vacation. Listen, new creation, this, God did not set up this life for this. It, 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 it's not, that's, not, that's not what he desires of us. He wants us to have, thank you, I came out, life and life more abundantly. He wants us to enjoy life. And in the process of enjoyment and, in, and, and living and having what, what I call heaven on earth, we are impacting the world and showing the world how to do this. This is so contrary to what the world is doing. That's what Christianity is. It's countercultural. When we start living like this, people are going to notice. No, I, I, sorry, I can't go. I got, I, I've set up a Sabbath day rest on Saturday. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm turning my phone off. And I'm just going to relax. I'm going to chill. And I'm going to spend some time with God. How, that, it just sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? it, it, we, we, it, it we're having a hard time even fathoming and, and putting our mind around what God, the way God has set it up because we've been so conditioned to do this stuff. And so next week, so, so, so for the, I don't know how many Sundays, we're just going to be practical. I'm, we're going to get real practical here. It's going to be a lot more practical than it is biblical. We, we're going we're gonna to do a little bit less theology, and we're going to talk about practical ways of having quiet time. Because what I've, what I've learned is that we, we, we talk about it, but sometimes we don't know how to do it. And we don't want to say we don't know how to do it. Because as a Christian, I'm supposed to know how to do it. But nobody's ever taught me how to do it. Nobody taught us the, the purpose or the point of how to do it. What, what, what's the purpose of it? It's not to just check off a checkbox saying, oh, I read my Bible this morning. Check. That task is done because what is that doing? It's making it part of your life and your distraction and making it busy work. That it's, just a, it's just a checkbox item. This is not that. This is not that. This, is, this is, should be the foundation of our life. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I know for a fact that it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. It's going to make your life, your days better. Because that's what Jesus says. It says, Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. So I want us to choose what's better. So, so, so preview for next week and the following weeks, we're going to be talking about this. This, t this topic's not going to go away because it is that important. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for taking care of us. We thank you for looking at our lives and seeing how busy we've made ourselves and how distracted we are from you and, and you still love us. You still bless us. You still care for us. You still watch over and keep us. Although we're so far from you. So, Lord, I pray that our desire for you would be shifted. That we desire you above everything else. That you would be the th first thing we think about when we wake up. That you would be the first thing, the last thing we think about when we lay down. That all the problems, the issues, the tasks that we have for the day be put where in their perspective, in their right place in our lives. That, that they're not as important as you are. That our lives aren't going to be right until we make you our priority. And so, Lord, I pray that you just give us the wisdom, the guidance, the understanding to one, make you our priority. So, Lord, I pray that you would expose those areas in our lives where we are distracted. Expose those things that keep us distracted. Expose those things that keep us away from you. And, Lord, I pray that you would remove those things. Remove the desire that we have within us to live up to this standard that we set for ourselves that, that you don't care anything about. All you care about is us. 
because you love us unconditionally. And all you want is a relationship with us. All you want to do is spend time with us. And so, Lord, we thank you that you desire us. You chase after us. You come and you pursue us, Lord. And and we are so distracted that we don't even see the things that you're doing. So remove the scales from our eyes, Lord. Give us eyes to see where you're working. Give us ears to hear the good things that you have going on in our lives and in other people's lives, and we can hear how you're working. And and, and give us a heart that desires you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And Lord, we pray that you will bless the food that is about to receive. Let it be for the nourishment of our bodies. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Let us all stand and sing our closing hymn. Amen. <laughs>